Hey, what's up guys? It's Medhead and this is your pre-med timeline. So, I know a lot of you guys have questions about the timeline of your pre-med experience or career, but before I get that started, I wanted to just give the opportunity to say thank you you guys so far for the support. It's been really great so far and I hope we can really continue. And if you guys have any ideas as to what you want to see in future videos, any questions, let me know. I love hearing from you guys. And with that said, let's get started. So with these four or five years, I'm going to be talking about kind of the timeline that I think that might be best. Now this timeline is not going to work for everyone by any means. This timeline is what I kind of recommend or what I would um, want the kind of, I guess, average pre-med student to follow that would kind of go through four years. I'm required to go through four years just because it's what works best for me and also because jam, you have to go through four years, you can't take a gap year straight to med school. So as far as the focus, it's gonna be kind of over four years, but I'll kind of mention five years. Five years is not much different than four, you just kind of spread it out a little bit more. Now for your freshman year, so you wanna be able to focus on your grades right now. It's not really big on kind of getting research until maybe like second semester freshman year, but your freshman year you wanna build a really good foundation because it's harder to bring your GPA up than it is to bring it down. Now, by what I mean by that is you don't wanna be in a low place because it's pretty hard to bring it up. You wanna set it high. So the next thing you wanna do, make sure that you find a pre-med club or a group. It doesn't have to be AMSA. Um, Actually, in AMSA, it is a big organization. Some people don't like that. I think AMSA, is especially, specifically at Baylor, is a great program, and I really enjoy it, but we'll find out what works for you at your university. Now, freshman year, that semester, is for kind of building the setting blocks. And you're going to get to Christmas and kind of want to start doing more. Now, <laughs> I might be considered overachiever or <laughs> Too much, um, but what I actually started to do was start to look at my next semester's classes, start to look at the material on that, and it just helped me get kind of not a really a head start, but get more familiarized with things so I wasn't kind of not knowing what was going on. Another thing you can do is also go on a mission trip. If you see you on your freshman year, fall semester, you can think about going on one year, uh, during your Christmas break. Now spring is a little bit different, you want to try to still maintain your grades, but you also want to try to start thinking about leadership positions within an organization you joined, or another one. Not I don't advise joining too many organizations. One or two that you're super passionate about and super, uh, super involved in. But you want to start looking at a leadership position and at least one of those clubs. I would recommend actually one so you could focus on that. Towards the end of your, or actually towards the beginning, I would recommend towards the beginning, depending on when you want to shadow, I would recommend contacting any doctors that you can and make sure that you can get your shadowing hours in to get that experience or exposure to figure out what is the actual side of medicine, not the kind of glamour -y side of it so you get the real thing. Also, make sure that actually this is more of a freshman fall thing, make sure that you have an activity log. That is one of the biggest things that uh, a lot of people will forget to start is an activity log to keep all your hours, everything you volunteer with, um, all your experiences, your research, internships, you'll compile all that there. I keep mine on the Google Docs so that I kind of don't really ever lose it unless Google crashes. I don't know if that's possible, but <laughs> I keep it there because I think that's the most safe place for me to keep it. And it's just a place where I like to write down, if I shadowed, I'll write down kind of reflections on it, how many hours, date, where, who was a doctor, specialty, things I saw, just kind of things like that. And it's a really good thing for you to keep because three years from now, you're gonna look back and be very happy that you have this compiled list and you don't have to kind of go all the way back and kind of forget things and you have everything straight for the time you're ready to apply. But it's a time to start thinking about the MCAT. You wanna start thinking about when you wanna take it, the classes you're gonna take during the time you're studying, are you taking it during the summer so you don't have to study during classes? Also make sure you keep focusing on your grades and maybe now is the time to start talking to professors about research. Research is a lot of, it's actually highly debated on whether you need research or not. I think it really depends on the school you're going to. A lot of schools like to see research and they will tell you they're research heavy, especially if you look on the MSAR. Um, the MSAR, sorry, that is kind of a booklet about 
all the med schools and what they really look for. But as far as research, I think it's kind of a general necessity to try and just check it out, see if you like it. I didn't know if I would like it, but I actually love the research um, lab I'm in right now. So research is a big thing you want to start doing your sophomore year. Spring of sophomore year, that's the time where you really have to start thinking about the schedule for junior year and actually start, you know, kind of writing out plans and kind of manifesting it. And junior year is where it kind of hits the ground running. Junior year, you want to make sure that you finish those classes that are going to be on the MCAT. So by that, I kind of mean finish the classes that are going to help you the content on the MCAT. So it should be right now, kind of probably biochem, um, maybe physics too. Hopefully it's two. Um, because you want to make sure that you're not taking classes that you need for the MCAT the same semester you're taking it or the same kind of time area you're taking it. Because you want to make sure that when you're start studying for it, you finished all the classes that you need. So I'll be finishing biochem and physics two junior year first semester to make sure I can be ready to take it second semester of junior year. Because you don't want to be uh, kind of missing out on information that you could have learned in class while you're studying for the MCAT. Second is it's time to actually start registering registering for the MCAT. So when you register for the MCAT, make sure you're kind of on time. I've kind of heard that the MCAT registering process is pretty uh, cutthroat <laughs> apparently. It's really hard to get a time because everyone's registering at the same time and they're really quick about it. So make sure that you already had that kind of ahead of time when you want to take the MCAT and you register as soon as possible. Now is also the time you want to start to talk to teachers that you're kind of close with, that kind of have seen your performance and can say something good about it. You don't want to get teachers that you had a bad experience with. But letters of recommendation are needing to start being kind of initiated. You need to start talking to teachers about getting letters of recommendations and giving them time to actually write one. Now I know at different schools there's different processes with letter of recommendations. At Baylor actually they compile kind of all of them together uh, with something called the pre-health committee. But just kind of find out how that process works at your university and start getting those letters out. Now Christmas is a time, <laughs> it's really difficult because you're wanting to take the MCAT second semester. So do I start studying for it during Christmas? I would say yeah. Um, it does suck, but you wanna make sure that you get those, that time in to start getting a good foundation on starting to study. And what better time as to when you don't have school. So Christmas, I would recommend to start studying, but also make sure you take rest, take care of yourself but also make sure that you have time to actually focus on studying and start taking those practice tests and start hitting the ground running. If you feel ready, spring is the time you want to take it because by the time you take it during spring, you want to make sure there's enough time for the scores to make its round back to you. <laughs> to make its rounds back to you and so that you have time to apply to med schools because if you take it and the MCAT score doesn't make it around back in time for you, and you take it too close to around the time where you're applying, um, then you wouldn't be able to apply without MCAT score. So summer, you wanna start applying. I think applications usually open around June 1st, around then, and you wanna start applying. Summer, pass, you're in senior year. It's time to fun, party, celebrate, kinda, not really, maybe, don't know what your plans are. If you're a five year, then senior year is kind of your time to start doing the MCAT and all of that stuff. But if you're doing around the same time, uh, the time schedule I'm doing, then senior year is the time for you to make sure that you get your interviews ready. Also, during the summer when you're applying, you get interview ready. Make sure you start preparing for those interviews. Some of those questions can be tough, so you might want to do some sample questions, look up, kind of do your research on different schools. And whenever you get off of these interviews, it's time to start going on them your senior year, your fall, fall, fall semester. So when you go on those interviews, and you kill them, you're going to encounter Christmas, which is actually a lot of interviews around that time, I'm pretty sure also. And you might even extend the interviews into senior year, second semester. So spring, you might have interviews then, but when you're wrapping them up, make sure that you start thinking about the schools you really want to go to and those offers that are legitimate that you really want to start looking at and making sure that you know okay, what's actually the school I want to go to? Because I know you guys are going to get more than one offer, and if it's just one offer, that's completely fine. 20 yeses or 20 noes, and one yes is still a yes. So just one yes is enough, but if you get several offers, make sure that you just have uh, kind of the narrowing down your spring year of second semester, spring semester, senior year. Sorry, um, but 
now is the time where you kind of get to relax but also make sure you kind of follow up with uh, your application materials also throughout your senior year. Make sure that you're following up these schools. And your summer, <laughs> after senior year, it's time to relax. It's kind of been a long process, so you wanna make sure that you relax and actually spend time with your family before you go off to med school and kind of get to be able to see the world and kind of do things you've never done before because <laughs> your summers are kind of hectic. But that's the four years, and you wanna make sure that throughout it all, you take care of yourself, it's a lot, but this is also super individual for each person, so if you need a little bit more time, then make sure that you allow that time, because you don't wanna rush things, and you wanna make sure that you do everything with care, and you also do everything with health, that's a saying, but you wanna make sure you also really take care of yourself. So with that being said, thank you guys for letting me join you on this MedHead, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Be sure to leave comments down below, to like, subscribe, and let me know what would you like to see in other videos coming up. Thank you guys, see you later.